Hey crafters! Now you're probably wondering why I'm wearing a Christmas sweater. Well, today we're gonna be focusing on personalizing Christmas cards. Now, of course, all of the techniques I'm gonna show you today can be transferred over to regular cards as well. It doesn't have to be for Christmas. But my friends and I are partnering up and we are collaborating to bring you a Christmas vault of ideas so you can get your holiday cards started. In total, we're gonna to be doing 20 Christmas cards for 2020. Feel free to use the hashtag above if you're interested in showing us what you create after being inspired by this video. Now can I just say there is nothing like sitting in a room in July when it's 95 degrees and no air conditioning than filming in a Christmas sweater. But hey, I love creating my holiday inspiration early so you can get an early start on your holiday cards. So let's get started. So the first thing that I decided to do when I was creating my personalized Christmas cards was to print out a photo of my dog. Of course, you can replace this with children, family photos, whatever you like. Now the great thing about card making is it doesn't really have to be the most high quality photo ever. Now when I printed out this photo, I decided on black and white. Why? Because black and white photos can kind of go with any color scheme with a card. So I die cut this photo out with a circle die, just made it a little extra special with the shape. But then I had to add it in my card in a way that looked natural. So I decided to grab my Glimmer Hot Foil machine and foil a sentiment frame for around the photo of my dog. Now this was made really easy with the coordinating dies so I could cut out the proper circles and the appropriate sizes. There's something about foiling Christmas cards that go hand in hand. The beautiful foil and shimmery look reminds me of Christmas lights and garland and tinsel and all of that stuff. So foiling for me, I love doing it at Christmas time. So I decided to hot foil the word Christmas cheer in the circle and then add it as a frame behind the dog. And for an extra little special touch, I decided to foil a little border around the white piece of cardstock that I attached to my red card base. I love the way that it turned out. It looks, it's so personal. And of course, if you have pictures of your kids, your family, your dog, whatever, people are really going to love it. Now for my next idea, I decided to do some ink blending. Now, of course, with ink blending, you have possibilities to add all sorts of Christmas colors. So I've gone ahead and blended a background, and I also decided to grab a snowflake stencil and blend over top. So now that I have a blended background, and of course, you can just use a simple piece of cardstock that works as well, I'm going to grab some letter dies, and of course, it might take a few letter dies to figure out which actually fits in my card, and I'm going to die cut the last name of the family that I'm sending it to. I've decided to create this card here for an aunt and uncle, and they of course share the same last name as I do. Now what's great about this is you've not only personalized with the name of the people, but you can also use the letters that you cut out to decorate the envelope. That adds a great amount of coordination, it adds that special handmade flair, and it's very personal to the receiver. Do you personalize your cards usually when you make a card? Do you sit down with a specific person in mind and cater the card to them? Or are you more of a generic card maker? I have to say I'm still more of a generic card maker than I am a personalized card maker, but I really do enjoy both. Let me know in the comments what you do. All right, so sometimes last names get too long to put on cards and first names too. So another thing that I like to do is think of the person's particular interests or hobbies. Now I have several friends and a sister that absolutely love Harry Potter. We share this bond completely. And so I decided to create a Harry Potter Christmas card. Now I don't have any Harry Potter stamps or dies. I only had a bit of washi tape. So one of my main go-to things is using my Cricut machine. So I wanted to search for a Harry Potter image that I could add to my cards. My go-to shop is Etsy. All I do is type in what I need, followed by the letters SVG. This is a cut file. And so I ended up finding this Happy Christmas with Harry Potter on it as a file. I purchased it, downloaded it, and it only cost me a dollar. So I went into my Cricut software, I hit the upload button, and then I added my image that I had downloaded it. So all you have to do is hit the browse button and then insert the image as needed. The next thing you need to do is turn it into a proper size. So you're going to want to make it obviously by four by five and a quarter, roughly, maybe even a bit smaller. And then you're going to turn it into a draw file. And that is really important. And what's also important is that you attach or weld all of the pieces to there. That is button is in the bottom right hand corner. 
Now you can cut these out of course and then glue them all on there, but I wanted to use my foil quill. So I placed it on my mat at the one by one inch. That's exactly where I'm gonna put it on my cardstock as well. And I'm going to cut it from there. The setting you use when you're using your foil quill is the thing that you're foiling onto. So for me personally, today I used medium cardstock and that works for me. Now it's go time. So I've attached my cardstock to the mat. I've placed a piece of foil, foil side up, and I've attached it with some washi tape. Now the machine does all the work for me and then when it's all done, you can go ahead and see your foiled image on your page. This is really perfect when there's that stamp or die that you just simply don't have. Now if you want to learn more about the foil quill, I do have a video on that. You're welcome to check it out. Another way to personalize the cards too is by using your own wax seal. I have both a personalized one with my initials on it and I also have a Harry Potter one that I got at Harry Potter World. So I can just go ahead and melt down the wax and then I can go ahead and add this to my envelope to seal it all up. Now this one here, we went into some cards that require some really specific supplies. Now another thing that you can do is simply stamp out a sentiment, a custom sentiment. For me, for example, I have to create a cards in a lot of languages because I have a lot of friends in different countries and I speak multiple languages. And so I have a alphabet stamp that I use that I will create sentiments of Merry Christmas in other languages. But not only that, if you don't happen to have an alphabet stamp and you wanna use even less supplies, grab yourself a marker and a flashlight, or you can even use the window if it's a bright sunny day, and trace some things from a book or print off things to trace. So you can print off any sort of font that you like and then hand letter it by hand using a marker or a pen. Or if you're like me, I have a few bullet journaling books that I like to use and I can simply trace them. There's no need for an expensive tracing light table. All you need is a window or the flashlight of your phone or a regular flashlight to get started. I was able to customize this card in my own handwriting, stamping, and some things that I traced. And so you're able to get a variety of looks. Now don't forget that this video is a part of the Christmas vault. So there are 20 amazing ideas on how to create Christmas cards. The next stop that you're gonna wanna make is over on Ardith's channel. Ardith has very clear instructions on how she creates her cards. She's going to be working with layering dies to create cards, tags, and all sorts of things. So be sure to check out her video and the rest of them in the Christmas card vault. Thanks so much for watching and Merry Christmas.